Dzień dobry wszystkim, dobry wieczór. Witam się serdecznie. Dzisiaj jest 16 grudnia. Coszka? Grudniu. Grudnia. Grudnia. Uh, Sunday, 16th December. Tomorrow I fly back to England. Wednesday evening I fly back to Poland for two weeks of Christmas fun. Already feeling Christmassy. Christmas tree was up on the 1st of December. Got all our Christmas cards up. We've got lovely new interior doors all through our flat, which is nice. We had these horrible yellow things. Uh, that's got nothing to do with Christmas, but you know. Um, and last week we made our Christmas cake when my mum was here. This morning, me and my little boy, Chef Oliver, down there, made the Christmas gravy, which sounds really strange to a lot of people, but I make a special Jamie Oliver recipe, which you can do and freeze before Christmas, and it is awesome and tasty, and we've already made it today, and it's going in the freezer, ready for the 25th of December. Anyway, back to today and the video that we are going to do. Back on the 11th of November, Zosia made a video about the 11th of November, why it was important in Poland and why it was important in England, for two different reasons. And during that video, which she made on her own, is only on YouTube, it's not on the Facebook channel, Facebook page, uh, we said we were going to start making a few videos about the differences between Poland and England with very, in various subjects, uh, such as Christmas, different customs, holidays, um, and superstitions. And today we wanted to talk about superstitions. I'm not going to go into the reasons why all of these things are superstitions, because a lot of them are religion-based, and I don't want to get into all of that malarkey. But we are going to talk about superstitions in the UK, superstitions in Poland, and superstitions generally, which carry over between the two countries. So without further ado, Oliver wants to say something. Let's see what the elf is doing. Okay, let me just change the subject. Ollie, explain who this is. The elf on the shelf. Yeah. He, and she goes to Christmas. Well, he goes to Santa every night. And he comes back every day in a different position until the 24th. Okay, so he arrives on the 1st of December. This is Eric the elf. And each night he does something normally silly. So last night... He was eating chocolates from the Christmas tree. He's got chocolate all over his face. You probably can't see it. And yes, the night before, he... yeah, he, he was, was, he was in the lampshade. Lamp yeah, so he's bonkers. And he goes back every night to tell his father Christmas or Santa Claus, depending where you're from. Or Mikawaiki. Tak? Mikawai. Um, where, uh, if the kids have been good or not. Anyway, three minutes gone already. So let's talk about superstition. Yeah. Okay, so I'm just going to look at Sophie's phone because we've made a list. So first we're going to talk about British superstition. Sorry, not tradition. Superstitions. We're not talking about customs here. We're going to do that on another video. Superstitions. What we believe brings us good luck or bad luck. Ollie's going to join us too. So, first on the list, what we've got, Sophie? Don't pick up a knife if you drop it. Don't pick up a knife if you drop it. This is something my mum will do often, because I live at my mum's house during the week, Monday to Thursday normally. I'll get home from work and there'll be a knife on the floor. And in England, a lot of people believe that if you drop a knife, someone else should pick it up, otherwise you get bad luck. My mum does that. And Mummy and Kinga does it as well. So she's brought that British tradition. I don't think it's a um, superstition, sorry, in Poland, but uh, Kinga's brought it over to, to Poland, which she does with a few of them. No, new shoes on the table. So in the UK, we have superstition. If you buy new shoes, they shouldn't go on the table. That's in a box or a bag or whatever. That superstition in Poland is no shoes at all on the table, um, which if you think about it, quite hygienic really. You don't really want old shoes covered in mud and whatever on your table where you're going to eat your food. But slight difference between England and Poland there, or Britain and Poland. Money spider around. Money spider around your head. This is a bit odd. When you think about these, you grow, you grow up as a kid. Sophie, don't know this one. Do you know this one, Ollie? No. When you grow up as a kid and you're taught these oh, things, look. it brings you wealth and happiness and money. So um, a money spider, don't know how you translate it into, into Polish, but a very small little golden and black spider. You get hundreds of them in a, in a, in a web. Um, and if you see one, you take it on its spider's web, you put it around your head, I think it's three times, and you let it go over your shoulder. And that is supposed to bring you uh, wealth. Don't think it works. Next one. Open all the windows and doors. Open all the windows and doors on New Year's Eve. Ah, I didn't know that. Yeah. 
Uh, if my sister watches this video, this is something she does every single year. So on New Year's Eve, it's something to do with... Can you just sit, mate? Oh, it's not a dancing video. Oh. Oh, I thought you were going to talk about superstitions with us. Okay. You could talk about something in a minute, walking under the ladder or something. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. So, my sister, every New Year's Eve, will open all the windows, all the doors. It's supposed to let the bad out and the good in, or the old, new, old year out and the new year in, something like that. Um, I don't do it myself, I don't do many of these. Next one. Uh, don't wash on New Year's Don't wash on New Year's Day. Apparently if you wash your clothing on New Year's Day, you will wash away a member of your family. Something my mum does, or doesn't do, should I say. She doesn't wash on New Year's Day. My grandmother never used to, I think my sister too, but again, I ignore this. Don't really take much notice of it. Uh, say good morning to the first magpie you see. Say good morning to the first magpie of the day you see. Hmm? I do that. Yeah, so um, this is a weird one, and I remember being the age of 13, and I did, used to deliver milk with uh, my next-door neighbour, who's obviously a milkman, and I worked with him on a Saturday morning, and often he would say, morning, Mr Magpie, and I thought, what is he doing? And then as I grew a bit older, I realised this was a superstition, and people did it. And Kinga does this all the time. So when we're in Poland, then we're driving, or we're on the bus, and she sees a magpie, she'll salute the magpie, and say, hello, Mr Magpie, or dzień dobry panie szroko, something uh, like that. Whilst we're talking magpies, we'll talk about the one I think somewhere near the bottom. So if we have a song in England, and depending oh, yeah. on the amount of magpies that you see oh, together, yeah. brings you something different. So the song goes, one for sorrow, two for joy, three for a girl, four for a boy, five for silver, six for gold, seven for a secret, never to be told, eight for... I can't remember. Um, I think that's it, up to seven. So if you see one magpie, one for sorrow, it means uh -uh, not going to be very good. Two for joy, you're going to have a joyous day. Uh, three, for, three for a girl, four for a boy. So if you know anyone that's pregnant, you see three magpies, of course, they're going to have a girl. And if you see four, they're going to have a boy. And so on. What have we got next, Soph? Spill uh, salt. Okay, not everyone knows this one, but this is one that we do in our family. And again, I don't do it, but a lot of people do. Uh, Spill salt. If you spill salt, you are supposed to show, I think, with your, if you spill salt on the floor or on the side, you take a pinch of salt in your right hand and throw it over your left shoulder to stop the bad luck. Something like that. Uh, break a mirror. Oh, I know that one. Break a mirror. I, I think, think this one's, yeah, that was quite universal. You did it. I did it with our brand new bathroom that's about a month uh, old. I broke, I cracked the mirror. Do you know bottom, what a broken shared. mirror brings, supposedly? Seven years bad luck. Supposed to be seven years. No, so Let's hope not. Mm. Next. Uh, umbrella indoors. Lots yeah. of people know that. Umbrella one. indoors. So that's quite a common one as well. Oh. We don't open an umbrella indoors. I don't believe again in this superstition. However, why would you open an umbrella indoors? <laughs> I just don't do it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, don't walk under the ladder, are you? Oh, you could talk about this one. What, this one? Uh, yeah, it just brings you bad luck if you walk under a ladder. Supposed to bring you bad luck. Might bring you bad luck if there's like a man up there painting and he drops a tin of paint on your head. That's or, bad luck. Or even if he falls on you. Again, I think that's quite universal across a few countries. Black cat crosses path. Again, this one I think is quite common. So if a black cat crosses your path, if you're walking down the street and a black that's cat yeah. walks in front of you, that's supposed to be bad luck. I don't really believe that. Horseshoe good luck, I believe that one. Horseshoe good luck. Now, I think this happens in many, many countries, this superstition, but I don't think it's always the same because when we, when I first came to this flat here in Poland, the horseshoe was on the wall, but it was down with the two ends of the horseshoe facing down. And in the UK, we believe, or people, some people believe, that the horseshoe needs to be up this way. If you have the horseshoe that way, the good luck falls out of the bottom. So that's why we have our horseshoes up. Um, he's got one in the, the back, back, back garden, essentially, on the wall. Yeah. What's next? Um, cross fingers, good luck. Cross fingers. Yeah, I think a lot of people do this. Cross your fingers if you're hoping for some good news or for good luck. It's like um, 13. Generally, yeah, number 13. So we've got Friday the 13th. People think it's an unlucky day. Uh, I discovered a little while ago, I, I put a post on my Facebook page actually, that at the Luton Airport especially, I noticed that there was no gate 13. Oh, I know something. What? Um, it, the month stops at 12 because 13. The month <laughs> stops at 12? Yeah, all the months. There's only 12 months. Ah, oh, okay, it's 12 months. Maybe, maybe yeah, that's right. Yeah, that, but that's the 
Is it? Yeah. Okay. Well done. I didn't know that. Thank you, Ollie. There are normally there is normally no row thirteen <coughs> on an aeroplane, which my friend Magda told me, Jenky Magda. And hotels generally or buildings don't normally have a thirteenth floor, with the belief that um, that could bring you bad luck staying in that on that particular floor. Next safe. I think that's again quite universal. Thirteen. Last one. Rabbit's foot. Rabbit's foot. Yeah, this is, this is odd, you know. I don't but, know this one. Yeah. So a rabbit's foot's supposed to bring you good luck. So people nowadays will have a fake rabbit's foot, maybe on their key ring or on a bag. Okay. Um, supposed to bring them good luck. Is that all the ones we've got for British? Yeah. So they're British or universal. And I mean, again, there are probably a lot of them that are used in Poland. Um, drop us a comment if there are any that we've missed or something that you think needs to be added. Now on to the Polish ones. I couldn't find as many and I ran through these with Kinga. Some of them that I know she does constantly. Some of them she wasn't aware of. So, number one. Scales from carp in a wallet. Scales from your carp in a wallet. So I think most Poles will do this. As we're approaching Christmas, we will definitely be eating fish. We will definitely have some carp on um, Christmas Eve for our Vigilia meal. And from that carp we normally take i even do this one for some reason um a scale from the carp and put it into our purse or wallet and that again is supposed to bring you wealth um through the year um handbag slash purse on the floor handbag slash purse on the floor now this one i find this i find this um yeah, you're supposed to lose all your money if you put your bag or purse on the floor. But I find that so annoying because I walk in from uh, from a day or from work or from a flight or whatever and Kinga's bag is always on a chair, oh. never hung up. And then I just pick it up and put it on the floor and it really gets on her nerves because for me it's not it's not bad luck at all. Um, but yeah, that one. Button chimney sweep. Button chimney sweep. So don't see as many these days. Occasionally in Poland we do. Uh, used to be lots of these in London, but a chimney sweeper guy who cleans your chimney. Um, if you see one of those in Poland, it's good luck. But in order to make the good luck work, you must touch a button on your clothing. Mm. Um, oh yeah, black if you see a nun. So like black. you have to touch something black. Correct. Do you know this one, Ollie? Mum does this. Yeah, we did it yesterday. You know, we left. Uh, we had some friends visit for the weekend, Mark and Joan. They came to see us. We took them to Ostrodomski yesterday, into the cathedral. We walked around, and as we left, there were some nuns. Oh, I did and see And that's nuns. why everybody touched Sophie on her back, and she didn't realise she was wearing a black coat. <laughs> um, so, yeah, if you see a nun in Poland, you need to touch something black to bring you that. good luck. Um, yeah, any shoes on the table. Look, any shoes like on that. the table, yeah, we spoke about that one. Uh, shaking... Hands over the threshold. Shaking hands over the threshold. Now, believe it or not, I've been coming to Poland since 2004, 2005 probably. And I know that Polish guys shake hands constantly. I do it at work in the UK. I do it when I'm here. I always shake hands with my Polish uh, colleagues, friends. Uh, but I only just realised this year, actually, that it's superstitious to not shake hands over the threshold. So if my friend or acquaintance comes to our flat, and I open the door and say, hi, how are you doing? I can't put my hand out to shake his hand until he enters the flat or unless I exit the flat. Again, bad luck. Didn't know that until this year. Hmm. We've got next, Soph. Uh, don't count pierogi whilst they're boiling. Don't count pierogi whilst they're boiling. Now, I've heard this one before. I asked Kinga, she said she wasn't aware of this. Um, probably one of the only ones that actually makes sense for some kind of reason. Um, so when, a, when you've done major pierogi and you're boiling them, uh, in the hot water, obviously, um, you're supposed to not count them as you're cooking them because if you count them, allegedly, half of them will go bad. Stick to the bottom of the saucepan and the yummy, yummy goodness inside, whether it's um, cheese or kapustak shivami or meat or whatever, is supposed to spill out. Um, maybe if it makes sense, if you're concentrating on counting the pierogi instead of making sure that they're not sticking to the bottom, you know, maybe that can happen. What have we got next? Um, don't sit down when baking a cake. Again, Kinga didn't know about this one, but and nor did I, but I found this one on the internet today. Apparently in Poland, if you are baking a cake and you sit down, a cake and you sit down, sorry, then the cake will also sit down. I, no, it will go to the bottom of the thing. Yep, the cake won't rise. Uh, it will sit down. So you do not sit down when baking a cake in Our Poland. Christmas cake was good. And um, Granny sat down when she was baking it. Yeah, with she did. So it's not true. <laughs> yeah. Proof. 
with the letter R. Okay, let's have a quick look. Marion in a month with the letter R in it. So again, this is across lots of different countries. So in Poland, it's good luck to marry in a month with the letter R in the Polish name, obviously. So we've got Marzec, March, Czerwiec, June, Sierpien, August, Wrzesień, September, Paśdiernik, October and Grudzień, December. So if you get married in one of these months in Poland, it's supposed to be good luck. Yeah. We were married in June, me and Kinga. So a life of happiness, obviously. Um, that's it. It's already 15 minutes gone, so uh, that's it. We are going to make another couple of videos coming up to Christmas time. As I said, on Wednesday, I'm back here for two weeks, so we've got plenty of times on our, hand, on our hands. Um, I will make a video, we will make a video nearer the time about the differences, and there are a lot of differences between the Polish Christmas customs and the British Christmas customs, and we will be celebrating both, just as we did last year. We've already had our turkey delivered, um, so we will be having traditional roast turkey and all the trimmings and Christmas Eve our traditional uh, vigilia with fish and salad and all lots of yummy Polish food. Um, so that's it, we will say goodbye. If you have any um, comments or superstitions that we haven't mentioned that I might be unaware of, even if you're from a different country than Poland or the UK, drop us a note down there and uh, we'll check it out. If you've got any more videos for comparisons between the UK and Poland, I had a couple, this was one of them, um, and we had a few more. So we will be making some different videos leading up to and into the new year. For now, we will say goodbye. Wish you all a Merry uh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Stay cool. Stay cool. Stay cool. See ya. Bye. Bye.